may befall me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Rather to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, and offer you examine while your blood, whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. Oh. By the next new moon, the ceiling love, the ceiling day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship. Love you, baby. Upon that day, be prepared to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else what to Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Oh, my God! Well, let me, Hermia. And my favor, you'll let Kitty settle my right. <laughs> you have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Oh, you are my favor. True? True. It hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. <laughs> I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed, my love is more than his. Which is more than all these boasts can be. I'm the beloved of the beauteous Hermia. Oh, why then should I not persecute my right? Demetrius, I'll about you to his head, made love to Anita's daughter Helena. And she, sweet lady Dose, don't set idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. Oh. Oh. Hey, 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 I must admit, lie heard so much, and when Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being a world of self I don't know. My mind is visit, but Demetrius come and he just come. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, my Hermia, look upon yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or oppose the law of Athens, yield you up to death, or to vow a single life. Come, Hippolyta, what's your my love? No. <laughs> How no, my love? Why is her cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like her want of rain, which I could well, be too young from the tempest of my eyes. On me, for I could ever be, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. A cross! Too high to be a thrall to love. Or else this graph respect of years. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eyes. If then true lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience. A good persuasion. Henceforth, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager. From Athens is her house about seven leagues. There, Jephthah, may I marry thee? And to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the woods of thee, without the town, I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, but you would strong as go.
beds are wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There my Lysander with myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet people. Pray thou for us. And good luck.
You must play pyramid and flute. You miss me. Well, proceed. Oh, <laughs>
in your jaw, keep his records. Yeah, it's a lot. Warrior 
Ursula to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity? How can thou thus for shame, Titania, grant it my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are sorceries of jealousy! Therefore, the winds peg and toss in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea, have every cousin river made so proud, they have overborne their contents. Therefore, the moon, the darkness of flood, pale in her anger, washes the air so that momentously the dew abounds. And in the temperature, we see the seasons alter. The spring, the summer, the child of autumn, the angry winter change their wants and liberties. And the maids world by their increase knows not which is which. This same poverty and evil comes from our debate, from our dissension. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling child to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys him not the child of me, for his mother was a fortress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air, full often have she buffed by my side. But she, of that boy being mortal, did die. And for her sake, I grew up to her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long can this wood intend you stay? Well, perchance I'll have to keep this wedding day. You will dance in our room and see our moonlight revels. Go with us. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Not for my fairy kingdom.
tell you that I do not, nor I cannot love you. And even for that, do I love you the more I understand love, Demetrius. The more you beat me, I will find you. You me, but after spending, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me to leave unworthy as I am to follow you. What worse a place can I beg in your love to get a place of high respect with me than to be used as you do so to all? Take not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. <laughs> To leave the city and commit yourself to the hands of one that loves you not? Your virtue is my privilege for that. It is not night when I do see your face, then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? Oh, run from me and hide me in the breaks, leave me to the mercy of wild beasts. The wild is having us to hide with you. Oh, let me go! Or if thou follow, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the woods.
what thou seest when thou dost wait. Do it for thy true love's sake. Love and languish for his sake. Be ounce or cat or bear, hard or boar with grizzled hair. In thy eye that shall appear. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some next vile thing is near. Oh. 
on the dank and dirty ground. Churl on thy eye, I throw all the power this charm doth. Oh. On thy eyelid, so awake when I am gone, for I must now to overrun. No, where are you?
never please. First, Pyrrhus must draw a sword to kill himself, <laughs> which the ladies can never buy. How answer you that? Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let this prologue seem to say, we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyrrhus is not killed at the end. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyrrhus, am not Pyrrhus, but Bottom of the Weaver. Oh, wow. Will not the ladies be fierce the lion? <laughs> I fear it. I promise you. <laughs> a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. Nay, he himself must speak though, saying, Fair ladies, I would treat you not to fear, not to tremble. Do you think I come hither as a lion? It were a pity of my love. No, I am a man. Oh. <laughs> As other men are. And there I let him name his name and tell the play that he is <laughs> Snug the Joyner. Pyramus at 
Minnie's tomb. Minnie's tomb! Man, why you must not speak that way? That you answer to pyramids. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Okay. Pyramids, enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tired. <laughs> oh. As true as true as horse that yet would never tire. <laughs> Cobbler, 
Thank you. 
my mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her tall sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals, Came together to master her supply, intended for Decius and Nashua Day. The baroness, thick skin of that very sort, who Pyramus possessed in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage take, and asked his no, I stuck to his head. And in that moment, it came to pass to tie your weight and straightway loved and asked Yes. <laughs> This thought that better than I could devise. But hast thou latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. And when she wakes, of course she must be I. <laughs> Send close. This is the same Athenian. This is the Athenian, but not this the man. Why rebuke you him that loves you so? Thy like breath so bitter on your bitter bow. Now I would try, but I seduce thee worse. Thou art fear, hast given me a cause to curse. No. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, be your shoes in blood, plunge in the deep, and kill me too! Ugh. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead. For all I can tell. I pray thee. Tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? Privilege never to see me more. Ugh. And from my hated presence where I so, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. What hast thou done? <laughs> thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Wait, oh, wait. 
with O and you will nothing wed. I had no judgment to her when I swore. Nor done in my mind that you give her over. Demetrius loves me and he loves not you.
most ungrateful maid. Did you conspire? Did you with these constraints to bait me with this no other reason? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems like you scorn me. Did you not send my sister as a scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And send your other love Demetrius to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore he speaks to the hermit hate? And wherefore doth thy sinner deny your love so rich within his soul? But by your setting up on your present, I understand not what you mean by this. Come! 
may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her! Yeah. 
sharp and even way. in my 
my arms, fairies be gone and always away. So drop the wood by the sweet honeysuckle. Gently in the bush the female eye the soul and rings the barking fingers of the elm. Oh, oh how I love thee. How I dote on thee. This sweet sight, mm. her dotage now I do begin to pity. I did ask of her for her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and a fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. Then, gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp off the head of this Athenian swain. Oh, oh God. <sighs> That he awaking when the, when the other do may all to Athens back again repair and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast wont to be. Be as thou wast wont to be. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Me thought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. <laughs> how can these things come past? Oh, how I love this visage now. Sound, music.
street. And this, Lysander. This, Demetriuses. And this, Helena. Old Peter Helena. Uh, but speak, Aegis. <laughs> is this not the day that Hermia gives the Antio of her children? It is, my lord.
are shaping Venice is like Mama Pen more than Caesar. But all the story of the nights were over, with all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesses than dancing images, it grows something a great fun to see. But, however, straight to happen. Here comes the lovers for the joy of mirth. <laughs> joy, gentle friends, joys and brush days of love accompany your hearts.
our imagination best and not theirs. If we imagine them no worse than they are themselves, they may pass for excellent men, madam. <sighs> Here come in two noble beasts, a man and a lion.
Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore a mess. <laughs> 